Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Potvin here. Um, just going over the new lab that we're going to be doing for the next section. Um, it's called the Right Machine for the Job Lab, and it's a little bit of a longer one, so um, I'm not sure how many labs we're gonna have in this unit. So this one, because it's a little bit longer, um, the other assignments might not be as big, okay? So we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do this lab very similar to the other ones. You do not need to conduct the lab. All you will be doing is um, watching the video, watching this video, and based on the results on this video, you're going to answer all the questions in the lab, complete the things that are needed for the lab, and go from there. I will have the link for this video on the lab, and I will be putting this lab in both a Dropbox and sharing it on to D2L. Now, the lab is a Word document, okay? So if you want to, I know there's been a few students that were having issues with the Word documents. If you want to type right on the lab, that's perfectly fine. I actually encourage that, but you have to remember to save this somewhere on your computer, okay? So if you're typing right onto the Word document, you have to save it somewhere on your computer. It doesn't save automatically um, until you actually save it somewhere on your computer and in some cases Word doesn't save automatically. The other option you can have is just copy and paste the whole thing onto a Google Doc and share that with me, okay? If you go and just submit it straight into the Dropbox and then start typing on it, I believe it just saves the original blank copy and I won't have any of your work on it. So make sure, make sure you save this somewhere on your computer. If you're not sure how to do that, message me or really talk to your parents. I'm, I'm sure um, your parents would be able to figure it out. But if not, send me a message, okay? Because um, uh, I want you guys to get credit for this. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip my phone here and we are going to stop it here. Okay, so here's the lab. So I'm doing it very similar to the, um, I'm setting it up very similar to the uh, Law of Reflection lab, where all you're gonna have to do is the highlighted components. So the title is Write Machine for the Job. Uh, you're gonna have to type in your name. You can just um, highlight that and type your name. You can leave it in, uh, you can leave it uh, highlighted if you want. Um, but yeah, just put your name there and put your class. So again, uh, Potvin AM or Potvin period one, Potvin period two, or Rennie, okay? Everything else I've done for you. Then the problem says, which simple machine requires the least amount of force to lift a one kilogram mass? And then the states here, the machine's being tested. Um, and then our hypothesis. My suggestion to you is watch the first part of the video, okay? It, it will say pause at this moment, and then you can go and you can come up with your hypothesis, okay? The materials are all, uh, the materials and the procedures are all on, or in your textbook on page 266 to 267. Um, it's up to you if you wanna go take a look at those. I, um, I go, at, go over it fairly well in the video. And then you're manipulated responding and controlled variables. You guys actually did a really good job with this last uh, lab um, where some of you made mistakes was you only gave me one controlled variable. I always ask for two and then also be specific. Okay, so uh, um, I know with the last lab a lot of you were just saying that the beams of light, I was looking for the um, incident angle, respond, uh, reflected angle. So make sure you guys are um, consistent with that. Then we have a table for you, okay? Um, there's three columns in each table. There's one that has uh, the force used, there's one that has an advantage, one that has a disadvantage. You are going to fill these all out as I conduct the experiment. So as you're watching the video on um, YouTube, you're gonna be recording the force and it should be noted or else I will tell you what it is and then an advantage of using that machine and a disadvantage. So we have the no machine, there's no advantages or disadvantages there. We have the ramp, a pulley system, and then we have a lever with the fulcrum in the middle, a lever with the fulcrum far from the mass, and a lever with the fulcrum close to the mass. Please, be, uh, please make note that these might not be in the right order in the video, so make sure you're re recording your results on the proper um, section. Then we have all of the analysis questions, okay? 
They're not super, super hard. There's just a lot of them, so that might, might take some time. Uh, what method was the most difficult for raising the mass? What, what was the easiest? Why do you think this was? Okay, so just based on the results, based on what I see, uh, what I said in the video, you can answer that question. For the lever or the meter stick, what effect does the fulcrum have on the location of the, sorry, what effect does the location of the fulcrum have on the force that you must use to lift the mass? So answer that, that's A. And then B says, what effect does the location of the fulcrum have on the distance your hand must move, uh, your hand move to move the mass, okay? And both of those things I mentioned in the videos. What feature of the lever made it easiest to lift the load? Um, what changes would you make to the ramp to make it easier to raise the load 10 centimeters? Uh, what could you change in the pulley apparatus to make it easier to lift the load 10 centimeters? And then we go to our conclusion, okay? What was the answer to your question? Use the sentence starter below. Based on the evidence of this, of this lab, the simple machine that required the least amount of force to lift a one kilogram mass was the, I'd like you to recopy that sentence, okay? I want you to recopy it and then put what it was, and then tell me why. This was shown by our, shown in our lab by, and just summarize your results. Next it says, state at least, uh, at least, we'll, we'll say one, I'll change that typo, at least one possible error, or maybe two possible errors that could have occurred during this lab, and tell me how they could have affected the results. And lastly, how could you use this information in this lab in the real world, provide an example for each of the machines studied in the lab. So when I'm talking about each of the machines, I'm saying uh, a ramp, a pulley, and then a lever. You don't have to use each lever, just uh, a lever in general, okay? And then I'll have the rubric down here for you. Um, I may tweak that as well right now, okay? so. Again, if you have any questions, please send me an email, um, watch the video, I'll piece this all together, and um, we'll go from there. All right, so here is the right machine for the job lab. Um, these are all the materials we're gonna be using. So we're gonna be using a spring scale. These are exactly the same spring scale. They go to a maximum of 20 Newtons and uh, lifts a maximum of 2,000 grams. Uh, they're both identical. I just have two of them just in case one breaks. We're going to be lifting a uh, one kilogram mass, and I've got two of those, and again, they're both exactly the same. And the goal for this lab is to figure out which machine uses the least amount of force to lift one of these uh, one kilogram or 1,000 gram masses to a height of 10 centimeters, okay? So the three machines we're going to be using are a ramp. So I've already got the ramp laid out. Um, from here to the ground is 10 centimeters. We're going to be using a pulley, a single pulley, a pulley with just one wheel, and we're gonna pull down and the load's gonna go up 10 centimeters. And then we're gonna be using a lever. And with the lever, the lever is a little bit different than the others because the lever is going to be used three different ways. We're gonna use the lever with the fulcrum, the pivot part right in the middle, so at the 50 centimeter spot on the ruler. Then what we're going to do is we're going to move the, the fulcrum so that it is close to the load. So the load will, will go to about 75 centimeters so that it is uh, 25 centimeters away from the load. And then we're going to move the fulcrum way over here to, uh, to be 75 centimeters away from the load. And then we're going to pull down. We're going to see which of these... Um, gives us the smallest amount of force. Prior to, before we go and do this lab, what I want you all to do is come up with a hypothesis. So the first thing you need to do before we um, actually do the experiment is a hypothesis. So I want you to tell me which one of these machines, the ramp, the pulley, or the lever at the three different locations, you choose which one of those locations, would give us the smallest amount of force and tell me why you believe that would be. Okay, and then uh, once you guys do that, you can unpause this video and continue on with the lab. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually conduct this experiment. What you are going to do, after you've done your, your variables and your hypothesis, you are going to record all of the data that I'm going to collect. And that's gonna be on the data table that is on the lab that I provided you, 
okay? There's three different columns for each of the machines. The first column is gonna be the mass or the load or the force, I should say, that it takes to move that load up 10 centimeters. You're gonna record that in Newtons. And the other two things you're gonna record are the um, advantage and the disadvantages of each of these machines. And I'm gonna mention some of these advantages and disadvantages as I'm doing the experiment. However, some of them you guys might have to think a little bit outside the box. So first thing we're going to do is record how much it takes or how, what the force is to lift this load simply off of the ground, okay? So we're gonna take it about 10 centimeters off the ground and it's going to be in Newtons. And I'll actually tell you what it is, but here we go. I'm lifting it approximately 10 centimeters. Okay, and as you can see, it's 10 Newtons of force pulling down, okay? So it's 10 Newtons of force pulling down with no machine. All right, okay, stop it. All right, so now we're going to test the uh, wrap, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the load, I'm gonna lay it on the side here, and I'm gonna pull it all the way up here, almost a full meter, okay? So a full meter, from the base to the top, and when we're at the end, it is going to be 10 centimeters high. As I'm pulling it up, we're going to record the force, and uh, we're gonna record the force that it takes to bring it up the full one meter, but once it moves the whole meter, it will be a total of 10 centimeters above the ground, or above my table. So here we go, right over here. Okay, so as you can see, it's at zero right now. And we're going to be watching right here as I move it up. It does fluctuate, so I try to go at a constant rate. But to go from one end to the other, it goes up two newtons. Okay, so you saw it was only two newtons to move the load from the bottom of the ramp all the way to the top of the ramp. Okay, unfortunately, we had to travel a full meter in order to get 10 centimeters up, but we use very little force. Okay, so now we're going to test lifting the load up 10 centimeters using a, a single pulley. Now, it is very important to note that this is a single pulley, meaning there's only one wheel up here, okay? There are other pulleys out there, you might have seen on the Bill Nye video, there are other pulleys where you can have three or four wheels, or sometimes you have a wheel that uh, moves along with the load, and that may have a different effect on our outcome. But for this case, we just have a simple pulley, a single wheel, wheel lifting up the load, and we're gonna pull down on the, on the load. We're gonna pull down on it, and as we pull down, we're gonna notice the load goes up, and we're gonna see if we get any force advantage. So we're gonna start, okay. Okay, and as you can see, going right to the scale, the spring scale, even though we pull down and even though we're using the simple tool, the math or the force that it takes to lift the load up 10 centimeters is 10 newtons. So it's the same as though we were not using any, um, any machine. But, so there's no advantage there. However, we've pulled down, the force goes up. So that might be an advantage. The force goes up, or we pull down, we use a downward force, and we get an upward force as an outcome. All right, that's it. All right, now we are using the lever. We're using the lever with the fulcrum in the middle, and we have the effort, or the spring scale, is about two and a half centimeters in from the end, and we have the load two and a half centimeters in. So it's all about even. So the distance from here to the fulcrum and from the load to the fulcrum should be equal. I'm gonna pull down, lift this up approximately 10 uh, centimeters, and we're going to see um, if there is any advantage with the force. So here we go, we're gonna start this now. So I'm pulling down, lifting it up about 10 centimeters, and as you can see, very similar to the pulley, the force should be at approximately 10 newtons, okay? So again, no real advantage. However, if you take a look at how high the load is moved, the load is about 10 centimeters high, it's about the same as the distance that I had to move. So again, I pulled downwards, 
I pull down about 10 centimeters, the load goes up about 10 centimeters. So there's no advantage in the force. So we're not getting it, it's not making the force any easier. However, we are doing a downward motion and getting an upward motion as an output. Okay, so that's very, very important. All right, so now we're back with the load, or with the, the lever again. This time I have the fulcrum very close to the load. It's at about 25 centimeters, okay, um, from the load. And the effort is far away from the load, approximately 75 centimeters, okay. And I'm gonna be pulling down and we're gonna lift the load up, hopefully 10 centimeters or approximately 10 centimeters. And we're gonna see if there's any force advantage. Okay. We're also going to have to pay close notice to how much I move. Again, it's going to be a downward force, getting an upward force out. However, there might be something unique about the distance. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And here we go. So I'm going to pull downwards. Okay, and I pull down and we get a very small force, probably about two, two and a half newtons. Okay, so obviously a huge, huge advantage for the force. That makes it a lot easier to pull down. However, let's take a look at how much I have to move compared to how much the load moves. In order to get this, e this um, low force out or this low effort out, I have to move a lot further. I have to move about three times the distance, two and a half times the distance, than the load itself actually moves. Okay, so huge advantage. It's very easy to lift up this load. However, we have to move a lot more in order to get this extra um, effort or this uh, lower force. All right. All right, so now we're doing the last one. Okay, so the last um, lever. And in this case, we have the fulcrum. 75 centimeters are very far away from the load. Okay, and we have the fulcrum very close to the effort or to the spring scale. Now I'm going to pull down on the spring scale and hopefully we'll be able to lift up the load and we will take a peek at what the force is and we should probably based on the previous experiment have a good idea of what's going to happen however um we're gonna see so here we go so i'm gonna pull down and hopefully this is gonna work i think i might have broke my spring scale and as you can see I have surpassed the 20 newtons and my load has not budged, okay? So obviously my spring scale is not strong enough to lift up this load. However, so what we're gonna put is greater than 20 newtons is going to be our effort because we don't um, actually have the load moving. However, I'm gonna take the spring scale off and I'm just gonna use my arms, okay? And I'm gonna pull down and we're gonna notice something with the load and how high the load moves based on or compared to how much my arm moves. So here we go, I'm gonna pull down. You can see I'm barely moving my arm. Okay, my hand has gone down about 10 centimeters like it did on the other ones. However, you can see the load itself is going up substantially higher, okay? So there is zero advantage for force. It takes a lot more force to do this to lift up a one kilogram load, which should normally take 10 Newtons. It's taking way more than that because the spring scale wasn't even able to record that. However, I can get a huge advantage. I move a little distance and I get a greater output distance, okay? And this is very, very, very handy as well um, in the real world, okay? And it's gonna be your job to think of some reasons for that. All right.